Hi guys, it's Blackie and welcome back to the channel. Okay, today is a little bit of an update, a little bit of discussion. My redneck camper is back on the road again. Uh, those of you that follow the channel know that for a while I was doing a uh, sort of a redneck camper series where I was talking about where I take my old Nissan pickup and that I have a camper shell on the back of it and I was using it for camping. And it was very handy for an old silver wolf like me to be able to just put out to the lake, stop, have everything in the back. I have a single mattress that drops into the back of the bed and fits it perfect. And therefore, made it an easy camp. Just throw a tarp off the back of it, pull a chair out, a cooler, and you're set to go. Well, I ran into a little bit of a problem last fall where this thing's got a lot of miles on it. And I started getting a... Uh, low oil pressure light so you know as the old girl finally reached the end and I began to diagnose the problem a little bit at the time not panicking and I remembered about oh six seven years ago I had the uh, oil pressure sending unit which is a fancy word for a plug that screws into the engine that's where you hook the wire up that tells you if you got high or low, if you got no oil pressure. It's simply a, a switch. Well, after 30 something years, that switch had finally given up the ghost and it's actually metal with plastic in the middle of it had cracked from age and was letting oil leak out. And so I had gone to the parts house and got me a replacement part and put it in. But that was a Chinese part. So I began to think maybe it wasn't the oil pump had gone out because it wasn't showing me other signs of it. It wasn't here knocking or anything like that. And so I began to wonder if it was that Chinese part was going bad. So it took me a couple of months to run down an OEM, Original Manufacturer Equipment, type one. And so I got a good friend of mine to climb under there because it's just something I can't do anymore. And put it in and immediately that cured the problem. It was that Chinese M switch. So now the redneck camper is back on the road. And so what we're talking about today is summertime camping in one of these tin boxes on the back. Well, it's a very convenient because I can simply drive to site like I said, in the back of this, I have a full-size single bed mattress about that thick that just slides right in. That gives me perfect support so it becomes one big bed. Out here on the outside of it where my camper lid opens up, I have, and I will be showing this in a future video, I've taken a U.S. Army mosquito net that goes over a cot. And modified it so it will go over this and seal up this end so I got a mosquito net on this end but in the summertime it's kind of hot down here in my south and so you need some sort of air so let me tell you what I've been using now you will find in other people's videos which is a decent idea if I was gonna be traveling across the country it'd be the way to go they have a full-size pickup and then they have made in where the tailgate goes across, they put in a wooden section with a window air conditioning unit that would slide in and out right here. So it would slide out on the tailgate and you'd have a wall like from right here going across that would seal up and therefore you'd be blowing cold air into the side and heat would be exhausting out and you could seal this up. If I was going to be traveling around the country, that'd be something that I would look at to make but I'm not. I'm just doing it for overnight campouts, maybe one or two days. So, realizing that in the heat of the south and etc., it just makes sense to be able to take it and find a way to cool yourself, especially at night. During the day, I'm going to be out and about. I expect it to be hot, but when you lay down and you try to go to bed, laying there sweating is just no fun. So, what I did is I got me a fan. Now let's talk about this fan a second. These are sold at Walmart and they're under 20 bucks. And they have this back that pops off right here. And you put D-cell batteries into it. It folds. Now, understand with these units. 
it's a friction fit right here so bend it slowly and gently if you grab and just go you break it okay but you open it slowly like that and when you put batteries into it it will run for say four or five hours on a set of 6d batteries but i wanted longevity and so when you look right here on the side there's this little bitty hole and markings and what that says is 9 volt DC 600 ohm, right there. So what I did was, is I took those numbers, 9 volt DC dash 600 MOH, something like that, you know what the abbreviation is. And I went on Amazon, and I said, power supply, and there it is. In fact, I believe, yeah, right there, if it'll focus on it, it'll tell you what the power supply numbers are, what its output is. And it has on the end that little plug that plugs into that. Now, where this is advantage is I've got this big Blue Eddy power cell right here. And so with it, instead of running DC batteries, I can simply plug that in, turn this on, set it to AC, Plug the power supply in. That'll run a week. Now, why not go with a regular window unit? Uh, as far as like an air conditioner, draws too much power. I would get a couple hours out of it at most, and it's going to deplete this. Even though this is a very powerful power cell, it'll run probably six, seven, eight hours but I didn't have to solar charge it. All I'm needing is air moving around me because I'm used to camping, right? Now, by choosing this DC unit, that's an efficiency point because a small DC motor running at maximum output, and this thing's got two speed settings. That's low, that's off. Sorry, my neighbor decides to fire up the lawnmower every time I come out. Uh, which it's summertime in Alabama. That's all you hear is people cutting grass down here. You know, you cut it yesterday, you got to cut it today. Go back to This little motor is designed to get high speed, low power drag out of 6D cell batteries and give you four or five hours of air. If I had been coupling it with this 2000 you know, uh, amp or whatever, power unit, I've got days and days. And it's hardly any draw whatsoever on this unit. So I've got something that can blow air on me all night, no problem. And also, I have a solar charger for this unit. So that allows me to simply put the solar chargers on top back my truck out into the sun for three or four hours, which we have tons of sunlight in Alabama, and completely charge this unit up in as little as four hours. Actually, with really hot sun, and depending on how much I use, I can tie back up in as little as an hour, and then be able to just put the truck back into the shade. Now, that's one of the things. When you're utilizing one of these campers is thermal mass heat. Don't park this out in the bare sunlight and then expect it to just be cool when you get in an hour after sundown. It won't. It's going to radiate heat for a long time. So I want to park the truck in the shade at least several hours before I'm going to go to bed. You know, that way I'll pull it out in the morning, put my solar charger up, retop up my power cell, run the coffee maker, whatever, you know what I'm saying and then pull this back in to the shade, just detach my power cells, and I will have this available for me at night when it's time to go to bed. It's a little self-repairing -re system, self-recharging system, you see what I'm saying? So at night, I've got air moving on. I will have a mosquito net over this back end. That is gonna get me from having bugs. But the other thing is the fact that laying inside of this tin box at night. You're breathing, your body heat is rising. It's not going anywhere if you don't have air circulation. 
to buy having one of these fans, I do have air circulation. A, it's going to cool me off faster, and B, it's going to keep my breath and everything just being trapped in that light I have talked about when you're inside of a hammock with a big mosquito net on it, and you just seem to be sweltering in there because your body heat and your breath are being trapped inside of it. Inside of this tin box will be the same thing. This fan will keep air moving around and keep that from happening. So I will sleep more comfortably and I will sleep more soundly because of that. So, to recap, the Redneck Camper is back out on the road again and we'll be having videos with it coming up shortly. For the cooling system at night, I want to use this because that way I can cool myself at night and prevent that stifling heat of just laying there even though you're in the shade even though you're climbing into this box at night it's 80 degrees out here right being able to just flip this thing on and have air blowing in your face if nothing else is a big advantage sealing this end up with a mosquito net to keep me from having bugs and stuff like that another advantage that will be coming up in a future video Hope you've enjoyed this, guys. If you have, please hit that like, share, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And if you look and find you one of these fans, all you got to do is go on to Amazon, read the numbers that are printed right below that power port opening, type those in in Amazon search, say power supply, and put those numbers after it. And you bring it up. This little power supply was $6. With shipping and everything to my door, it was a total of $15 well worth it for me. Till next time guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day guys.